This is the continuation of the story from Ignited Destiny. If you haven't listened to that one yet, the link is below. Your Eminence, just to be sure, not to question you. Please consider letting me fly you there. I could do so in mere moments. As you wish. Now, as we've discussed all manners of history, your mother's feigned death to avoid capture and torture, her debilitation after giving birth to you, raising you until she died eight years ago, the small but ardent ranks of those loyal to your name laying in wait. So now, what is the matter of which you wished to speak with me? Your Eminence, I am a knight. I cannot dismiss my obligations or my oath. Yes, I am also a dragon, but... I see. I do not yet understand your rationale, but I do accept that you've carefully considered this. Your Eminence, if you so command it, and I do beg you consider it carefully one last time, I shall be your ally and your partner, released of my knightly oath, and not defer to your royalty, if you truly wish it. Very well. While it does pain me somewhat, I cannot deny the dragon in me dances. <laughs> I shall abide by this, the last of your commands to me, your em I mean, the last of your commands, Verdia. I admit I'm also a little relieved. It's hard to study you when I'm always kneeling and bowing my head. <laughs> you sound so surprised. Surely you can appreciate how a man would be beguiled by your feminine charms, and a dragon would be engrossed by a human calmly staring it down in its own lair. <laughs> you underestimate your capabilities. That was perhaps the most impressive feat of poise and grace ever shown me by a human in either of my forms. In all honesty, if it was you that sought me over twenty years ago, I may have just agreed to aid you in exchange for your company. Hmm. Intriguing. Perhaps I have yet to learn more about myself. <laughs> I see so much of your mother in you. She was so kind and wise and generous. And even though he was gone, you inherited your father's determination and courage. And yet, so much more. <laughs> you are too kind. I have not been called handsome or noble in, well, in a very long time. <laughs> There's one thing you haven't told me, though. Why? Why are you trying to win back the throne? <laughs> Your responsibility to the people. <sighs> Lysandra gave you all the best parts of herself. I'm truly glad to be partied with you. I think your goals are just. Those that originally wrested control from your family are gone, yes, but those in place now are small in vision, cruel, greedy. I don't truly grasp, though. How ready are you? Do you know for certain how deep the rot runs? Which people need to be excised? I guess... I should not have doubted Lysandra's daughter. <laughs> S 
Speaking of your mother, did she suffer? <sighs> Good. I wish I knew she was still alive for that time. If she had been closer to my lair, perhaps I'd have felt her presence. I'd have restored her to the throne with my own sword, no dragons involved. Well, on a more pleasant note, what do you need from me, anyway? Ah, uh, are you serious? Asking me to be a symbol to rally behind? It sounds like I'll be playing the part of a statue in the capital city square. Ah. Uh, Ah, I see. So you do foresee at least one battle. What do you think my role in it? A dragon spewing flames and crushing enemies with impunity will smash their ability to wage war in one engagement. Hmm. Well, perhaps that is so. Unlike those bandits once pursuing you, these are mostly men of honor in the Crown's military, sworn to protect the Crown. Perhaps such savagery cannot be avoided, but I'd rather find a way to do it without sacrificing them. <laughs> Is it so odd that a sworn knight would dislike killing? Why do you smile at me? I suppose I'm no longer a knight in title, though, am I? Well... I would prefer the rest of the world never know of my true nature. The dragon and the man should be separate to all consciousness but yours. Of course not. I have no desire to hold some seat of authority nor wield any control in this land. I merely wish for peace and prosperity to return. To eliminate the corruption and malfeasance running rife in this kingdom, if it can still be considered that. To get someone with the people's interest in heart on the throne again. Someone who can lead them, who knows what is needed. I'm convinced that's you. <laughs> it is true, I have known you for but a few hours, but I do perceive a little more than the average person at this point. The senses of a dragon are extensive. <laughs> All right. I think we can leverage some of my unique capabilities to instill dread and panic, and perhaps take victory without spilling innocent blood. Though, I agree, guilty blood need be spilled. It is my duty. Oh, you don't know what I can do. Hmm. You saw it in the cave, though, but you didn't realize it. When I first appeared before you, from where did I arrive from your perspective? Yes, it looked as though I emerged from the shadows, because I did. I am a spectral dragon, implying in the manner of a specter. In darkness I am in any and all shadows. It may be hard to explain to someone who cannot experience it directly, but no, I am anywhere and everywhere. A shifting smoke in the darkness, able to move freely and without warning. Perhaps with some planning, bloodshed can be largely avoided. Now, my abilities do have weaknesses. In the light, I am unable to exist in such an ethereal state, and become but a mere lumbering, fire-breathing, impenetrable beast. <laughs> Erdia, your laugh is lovely. Oh, please pardon my impropriety. So, what do you think? Shall we reconsider the necessity of a bloody rampage? That pleases me greatly. Thank you. And speaking of darkness, twilight is upon us. 
The last leg of our journey shall be in the night. <laughs> There's no need to stop. We are but a few hours away. Ah, you wish to avoid the howling wood at night. Do press on. No creature shall dare approach us. Oh? <laughs> Have you even heard any creatures nearby this entire time? Yes. Animals know what I am and what threat I pose. <laughs> that is why I had to speak to the horses alone for a few moments before we started. It was not born of a love for horses, though I do have a fondness for steeds. Isn't that right, girl? Oh, I'm truly glad I do not intimidate you. Yes, me too. Well, if everyone else perceives man and dragon as separate beings, what ruse should be employed to keep the man, a stranger who's not even nobility, who's no longer even a knight, in the company of the queen? <laughs> a fine joke, your em Excuse me, Verdia. You, you must be joking, right? But me being king consort means marriage? This story will be continued.